How would you be able to tell which of these people suffer through a mental illness? Well, you can't. Looking at someone who won't tell you the places they've been, the sights they've seen, or the experiences they've taken in. And looking at someone can't tell you what's happening within. Only they can tell you their own emotions. Only they can tell you what is happening to them. They are the only ones that can tell you what they suffer through. Will they unfold their truth of having a mental illness? Will they find the treatment they need? Or will they hide their mental illness as if it were some deep, dark secret that must be hidden away and trapped inside, left with no escape? Why is it that 60% of those who suffer through a mental illness ultimately tend to try and hide their symptoms and soldier on rather than come forward? Why should people feel the need to hide their mental illness? People can so freely speak of their physical sickness. For example, we can all easily say, I have the flu, or I have a cold. Then we can go to a doctor, get medication prescribed to us, and heal, and get better. Yet people won't easily say, I have clinical depression, or I am obsessive compulsive. So they don't go to a doctor, and they don't get the treatment they need. They don't get the help they need. Why is it so easy for people to speak of their physical sickness, but not their mental illness? Is it too unbearable to shine a light on mental illness? Well, I hope not. Because I'm talking about it right now, and I haven't seen anyone walk out of me. Or at least I hope no one wanted to. <laughs> Clearly, this is a major problem. Why is it that those who need help can't get the help they need? It was found that 4% of our total health care budget is spent on our mental health. 4%. The number itself makes it seem as if mental illness is too insignificant to be deserving of any attention whatsoever. Nearly 20% of all adults in America are currently experiencing a mental illness. And that's just adults. Now imagine all the children and adolescents, me and my peers, what about us? Now that you're thinking of the one in five Americans who are currently experiencing a mental illness, can you imagine that 56% of them did not receive the treatment they need? Well, it's true. One example of why access to treatment is so unattainable can be seen in Alabama, where there's one mental health professional per 1,260 others. Maybe the standards are too low if one person is left to help 1,260 other people. The standards are so low that it makes it seem as if mental illness isn't deserving of attention. This is what contributes to people hiding in the shadows and keeping away and hiding their mental illness. And the consequences to this can be devastating. 90% of those who die by suicide have an underlying mental illness. Suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the U.S. 24% of current state prisoners have a recent history of a mental health condition. And some mass shootings have been due to the presence of a mental illness among a combination of other factors. Undeniably, there are consequences to the treatment barriers and stigma that surround mental illness. Just look at the end result. The suicides, preventable violent acts, and the overwhelming suffering. Having a mental illness isn't anyone's fault, and it certainly does not make you weak. It means that you need medical help and support from your family members, friends, and society's acceptance. But the fact of the matter is that those who need help are not getting the help they need. But you and I can fix this problem. Together, we can make a change that is much needed. We can do so by reaching out to those who need it the most. We can contact local representatives, state senators, give faxes, calls, go on Twitter, or simply better educate yourself about mental illness. In doing so, those who need help can get the help they need. Together, we can form a society that welcomes those with mental illness. 
But as of now, we fear that which we do not understand. Let's change that. Thank you.